We are back on Sunday today with our coverage of the ongoing protests and riots across the country, nearly a week after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Georgia Congressman John Lewis famously has been at the forefront of the civil rights movement since the 1960s. He was beaten on the bridge at Selma in 1965. On Saturday, Congressman Lewis called for peaceful protests, writing in part, to the rioters here in Atlanta and across the country, I see you and I hear you. I know your pain, your rage, your sense of despair and hopelessness. Justice has indeed been denied for far too long. Rioting, looting and burning is not the way. Organize, he writes, demonstrate, sit in, stand up, vote, be constructive, not destructive. Congressman Lewis was a friend and contemporary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm joined now by Dr. King's son, community activist Martin Luther King III. Mr. King, good morning. We're grateful to have you on with us and to get your perspective this morning. Um, your father famously said that a riot is the language of the unheard. It's a line we've heard quite a bit over the last week or so, not justifying but explaining what we're seeing in these streets. As you watch the images across the country, Mr. King, how do you explain them? What are we watching in America right now? So I don't know that um, beyond what we have heard every day, beyond what we are seeing and feeling, the frustration, the humiliation, the insensitivity. It was 50, over 50 years ago where my father was leading a demonstration in Memphis, Tennessee. And what he was leading was for sanitation workers to be treated like men. They had signs that said, I am a man. 50 years later, people were asking just for dignity and respect in terms of arresting a human being, and not a person ended up dying. And if we see these incidents, we see a variety of people who are, are joined. It's not just black people. It's black and white. It's old and young. Um, and, and, and so the, the, the answer is people, I think people need something very quickly, immediately. For example, in Minneapolis, ultimately there may be more charges brought. But, I mean, all of the world witnessed a man being killed. We all know this in front of our eyes. And yet it took three or four days for an initial action. And we say initial, but everyone there was complicit. And so why does the system take so long to work? And then really, why is it not, why is it not working for uh, communities of color and specifically African-Americans? How does it always end up in a fatality? That is unacceptable. We are acting inhumane in terms of how we as a civil society are supposed to act. And yes, people's actions are not... Um, the approach that I would want us to take, burning down our nation, is not the right answer. But when you destroy a building, and that is so tragic and should not happen, uh, yes, a building can be restructured, redone, rebuilt. Yeah. But how do you build it? How, how do you rebuild a human life when a life is gone? You can't. All right. We've seen extraordinary leadership in Atlanta where you are, Mr. King, from you, from the mayor there from the police chief there, from well-known people like Killer Mike and T.I. and Tyler Perry, imploring people not to burn down the city of Atlanta. I wonder, as you watch these images, what you think your father, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., would think as he watches all this play out. Well, my father, I believe, and none of us can really speak for him, but uh, certainly through his words, he always had compassion, and so compassion would certainly be in order. But, in fact, you know, I just believe that had my father lived, we wouldn't be even dealing with these issues. We would have resolved them by now. We would have a criminal system that is just, not an unjust system. How is 13 percent of the population comprised 60 percent of the jails? Uh, that is the first problem. I mean, the whole criminal system is not just. And until we get a system, it, it works if you have money, perhaps. But if you do not have money, when many and there are many people who do not, the criminal system does not work. It shouldn't be. It, it's both. It is a criminal system. It is not, in my judgment, a just system for everyone. It is just for some, but it is not just for everyone. So I mean, these issues though could have been Martin. resolved. Yes, sir. Martin Luther King III. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. We look forward to talking to you much more as this goes on. Thank you very much for your time today, sir. We certainly appreciate it.